right, hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. So before we get into today's episode, I just want to let you know that this week we are doing a big enrollment for my signature program, the Online Summit Program. Now, specifically, we are looking for hikers who want to get strong and pain-free so they can conquer every adventure. Now, if you are potentially looking for a little bit extra help with your training for hiking, if you're preparing for a big trip, if you're trying to get on top of an ache or pain which is holding back your hiking, or you simply want to get fitter and stronger and more comfortable for your regular hiking, I would absolutely love to hear from you. If you want to find out a little bit more about this program, what you can do is go to summitstrength.com.au slash apply. Now, on that webpage, you'll be able to book a free quick discovery call in which we can sort of touch base, have a chat, and really just see if we may potentially be able to help you, your hiking, your goals, and your situation. So if you want to find out a little bit more and organize a chat to see if this may be right for you, you can go to summitstrength.com.au slash apply, and I'll leave a link for that in the show notes below. And now with that being said, let's get into today's episode. Hey, my name is Rowan Smith and I want to welcome you to the Training for Trekking podcast. Now, this is the world's very first podcast, which is entirely dedicated to helping you train, prepare and conquer your upcoming hike, trek or mountain adventure. So once a week, I'm going to be giving you quality and practical information on the subjects of physical preparation for trekking, dealing with attitude and nutrition on the trail, so you can know everything you need to be doing to have the best chance of a safe, enjoyable and successful adventure. So now you know what you're in for, let's get into today's episode. All right, hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Now today I want to talk a little bit about cramps and hiking. Now, if you've ever dealt with a cramp on or off the trail, you know it's not much fun. (laughs) It's such a pain when you're cruising along, all of a sudden things tighten up and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, that got me. And even worse when it's a recurring thing where, you know, certain movements, certain uh, positions really, really make it uncomfortable. Or even if you're sleeping in a tent and things come on, it can be absolutely suck. And it's a topic that's come up a few times in the last couple of weeks and I thought I'd cover it in, in detail. Now, to be clear, I'm not considering myself to be a specialist when it comes to cramps, and I'm probably pretty sure there's lots of people out there who know a lot more than me on this subject. But there is some information that I would like to share, because I think it may be a little bit more than a lot of people have heard before, and it may give a bit of clarity, a bit of insight, um, which may potentially be able to help. So if you do struggle with cramps on the trail, or you've got a friend or family member who does struggle with it, you know, hopefully this will help. Now, when it comes down to cramps, There are really two big types of cramps that we'll typically talk about, and they're sort of relevant for what we're talking about here. There are, number one is exercise-associated muscle cramps. Typically, these are cramps which will happen during exercise, whether you're walking, hiking, whatever it may be, a muscle will all of a sudden cramp. Now, this is really, really common in the calves. A lot of hikers get this when they're going up or down hills, and it's a really, really, really common thing. Now, on the other side of things, there's something called nocturnal cramps which essentially happen when you're at night time or when you're sleeping. And when you're lying in bed and you're like, oh my gosh, my hamstrings just tightened up or, or whatever it may be. That's what's no- known as a nocturnal cramp. Now, there's probably a bit more that goes into it, but they're the ones that are relevant for, for what we're talking about today. Now, when it comes down to cramping, like with many things in the world of fitness and training and all of this, there's still a lot of debate around what the deeper, deeper reasons and the leading causes and underlying mechanisms of cramps. You know, there's a lot of smart people who debate this stuff, a lot of smart people who have good ideas and good theories, but in all honesty, it's still some question marks around it. So I'm not going to go into this in-depth detail of science because I may very very may well be wrong because even the smartest people that I'm aware of still don't actually know. But either way, we know it sucks, but and we also do know there are a number of risk factors and there are a number of things you can be doing to potentially reduce the likelihood of this. So in regards to risk factors, there's a few things that can go into this and kind of increase your risk of cramping. And these are going to be general risk factors, and then we're going to talk about hiking specific risk factors. Now, general risk factors that you kind of want to be aware of, fatigue. So essentially we know, and you probably experience this if you are a hiker or if you're, you know, deal with cramps, 
as you get tired, as the muscles get sore, as you get tired, as you get overexerted, sometimes cramps come on for that. And that can be a risk factor. So that is something that we need to sort of say, okay, we need to be aware of. Another risk factor is dehydration or an electrolyte imbalance. If we get dehydrated or if we don't have enough electrolytes, that can be a risk factor. Another risk factor can be short resting muscle length, which is essentially just saying, you know, your muscles, are they tight or are they relatively loose? Some people with tighter muscles at rest can be at a higher risk factor. And then also there's a risk factor of poor circulation. You know, a lot of people do have poor circulation. You know, there's just something they have to deal with. And that can be a bit of a risk factor for the nocturnal cramps. So out of those general risk factors, you know, some of them are, some of them are doable. Uh, some of them are controllable to a degree. And they're good to be aware of. Now, when it comes to hiking specific, because obviously we are talking about hiking on this podcast, there are a number of hiking specific risk factors, which, um, you know, in these situations, they probably do add a little bit of extra risk and potentially, you know, things to be aware of. Number one is if you're doing a quick pace of hiking that you're not used to. Now, we've talked about a lot on this podcast around hiking speeds, and we all have natural speeds that we hike at. And when we go out with a group, which may be a bit quicker than us, when we go with a friend that's a bit quicker than us, maybe we're trying to stuck in a weather window and we need to push the pace or or whatever it may be. When we do a pace which we're not used to, it can lead to all sorts of things. And one of the things it can lead to is a slightly higher risk of cramping because the muscles are going in slightly different ways. They're exerting themselves. They're putting extra force. This can ultimately just lead to a bit of early fatigue in certain areas which may not be used to it, which can lead to potential cramping. The same thing for rough terrain. You know, rough terrain, if we're not used to it, if we're crambling over rocks, if we're on, you know, dodgy routes, if we're in mud or whatever it may be, the body will move in different ways. It'll go go in different compensations to deal with it. And again, this can lead to fatigue in areas which may not be used to things. This can lead to muscles taking over and doing more work than they need uh, generally used to. This can lead to fatigue, which can ultimately increase your risk of cramps. The next one is hot weather. So we all know, you know, when we get hot, when we get sweaty in hot weather hiking, this can increase the risk of cramps. You know, this is directly linked to dehydration or electrolyte imbalance because when we're hiking in the heat, something that happens. Another one is new footwear. If we've just all of a sudden changed shoes, we've gone from shoes to boots or boots to shoes, or maybe we've changed insoles, or maybe we've just got something that fits very, very differently, the feet are going to move in different ways. The feet can cramp and the calves can cramp. It's not automatic risk, but it is a risk factor. And another risk factor is just lots of elevation change, meaning lots of up, lots of down. That can fatigue muscles in certain ways um, and that can, you know, potentially lead to cramping. Now, when it comes to this stuff, the reason I'm listing this off, it's not a case of saying, hey, you need to avoid all of these things. You need to avoid hot weather hiking. You need to avoid new shoes or whatever it may be. It's not like that. But essentially, if you do deal with cramps, It is worthwhile being aware of what these risk factors are. And so if you are experiencing these certain things, you can be like, okay, I know I'm going to be dealing with this. What can I do to sort of combat this risk and potentially reduce the chance of a cramp creeping up? Definitely worth thinking about. So coming down to what you can actually do for your cramps and for people who struggle with cramping on the trail what are some specific things you can do to help reduce the risk to help you feel more comfortable to help you know stop these getting in the way of their adventures and essentially it's coming to four factors that i would recommend personally there's probably lots of other things you can try there's lots of sort of home remedies and this and that but four things that i would typically recommend personally number one fitness now we've said fatigue is a risk factor when it comes down to this And we've said rough terrain, we've said quicker paces are risk factors. So essentially focusing on your fitness in your training can go a long way. So number one in general fitness, it's just making sure we are fit enough for the hikes that we're doing. So we're not getting to the end of the day where we're absolutely tired, where the muscles are fatigued, where we're just really feeling really, really, really struggling because that's going to put as a risk factor. I always say it's so such a good idea to be more fit than you need to be when it comes to your hiking for the particular hikes you want to be doing. And when it comes to cramps, it can be such a good thing. So making sure you are improving your fitness, which listening to the Training for Trekking podcast, I really hope you're doing that. Um, Number two is looking at specific fitness. So we sort of said, okay, doing quicker paces, doing rough terrain, doing lots of elevation change. These particular things can cause the body to work in different ways, which can lead to early fatigue in certain areas. So in our training, we're aware we struggle with cramps and we're aware we're going to be dealing with these types of things, whether it's rough terrain or quick pace, practicing this in our training. So it's not a massive surprise to us when we hit the trail, but the body's actually gotten used to this. 
So do some tempo walking, quick, slow, quick, slow, if you struggle with quick pace. Do some training hikes on rough terrain, which aren't so long before you get into something that's super, super long. Train on the elevation. Get the body used to these types of things. Now that's fitness. Another thing you can do, as we sort of said, dehydration electrolytes is a tricky thing, is making sure you maintain your hydration and maintain your electrolytes. So hydration, the typical measure that I often use, you say on this podcast is for hydration, ensuring that you uh, try to maintain a straw to clear colored urine throughout your hikes. So before you start hiking, see if you can start off with that particular color, straw to clear current. During your hike, see if you can keep maintain that if possible. And then after your hike, if you are a little bit darker, if you go to the bathroom afterwards, you're like, yeah, it's a little bit darker, drink a bit of water. On top of that, if you are prone to cramping, if you're aware of that, making sure you are on top of your electrolytes, have an electrolyte supplement, have a little bit before you start hiking, sip on it through as you go through. And then if you're in really, really big risk, have a little bit after as well, because this can go a long, long way. You can get really technical with electrolyte stuff, but typically that's what's doing. And I know this is the old, the old home remedy of like pickle juice, and that's pretty much the same thing. Pickle juice is just sodium, and I'm sure there's other things in there, but that's pretty much just electrolytes. So getting some type of form of electrolytes in you can go a long way. The next thing is mobility. As we sort of said before, short resting muscle length, meaning tightness in the muscles, can potentially increase the risk of cramping. So if you're aware there's certain areas that do cramp regularly, in your training, work on a bit of mobility. If your calves regularly cramp, make sure you are regularly working on mobility there. Do some rolling, do some stretching you know, through the week, incorporate that into your strength sessions or whatever it may be. And then if there are areas that do get tight, before you start hiking, do a little bit of warm up, do some rolling with a water bottle, do a little bit of stretch. In your breaks, do the same thing and stay on top of that. It's not going to be a dramatic change, but it can make all the difference when it comes to cramps. And then finally, as we sort of said, you know, there can be these nocturnal cramps when you're sleeping, and that factor can be circulation. A really simple thing, which you've heard me talk about in this podcast many, many times, is wearing recovery, compression, recovery, sports, compression garments, and wearing those overnight. So if you get t- uh, cramped hamstrings, if you get cr- tam- cramped, uh, cramped calves, lose my words here, cramped calves at night, Wear some compression sports recovery garments. Wear some recovery socks. Wear some recovery uh, tights, whatever it may be. That may potentially help the, the circulation enough to reduce the risk of cramping. Again, it's not going to be a magic pill, but it probably will make a difference. So if you are a hiker who struggles with cramps, those are four things to look at. Making sure your fitness is there, general and specific fitness. Making sure you're on top of your hydration and your electrolytes, and you're not just waiting till the end of the hike to drink water and have electrolytes, but you're doing it pre, during, and then potentially after. Making sure you're working on mobility, both in your training and also when you're on the trail, if you are you know, feeling things getting tight, and potentially look into some sports compression recovery wear. As we sort of said, cramping sucks. It's not much fun and it's still very, very unknown and misunderstood. But hopefully there's some general ideas there that may tip you over the edge from being able to get through a hike and you know dealing with a cramp as you go through, but actually being comfortable enough to get through it comfortably. So hopefully that does help. Now, one thing I want to say before I finish up this episode, as we sort of said at the start of the episode... This week, I am doing a big enrollment for my signature program, the Online Summit Program. So if you've been listening to this uh, episode or listen to this podcast in general, and you've been thinking about getting a bit of help with your training for a while, and you're thinking, maybe I would like to get a program, maybe I would like to get some support, maybe I would like to help get a structure in place to improve my fitness, my strength, my resilience for the trail. If you have been considering it for a while, I would absolutely love to hear from you because we are doing a big enrollment drive at the moment. Essentially, if you do want to find out a little bit more and see if and how one of our programs may be a good fit for you, your goals, your situation, and your hiking, what I'd like you to do is go to summitstrength.com.au slash apply. Now, from there, you can book directly a short call into our calendar where you can have a chat with us and we can sort of get to know each other and really just see if there's something we may potentially be able to help you with. And from there, we can have a bit more of a chat and take it from there. 
So if you were interested in finding out out how a specialized, structured, and personalized training process can help your hiking, would absolutely love to hear from you. Go to summitstrength.com.au slash apply. I'll leave a link for that in the show notes below, and we can take it from there. So thank you so much for listening today. Really hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you got a bit of out of it. And I really do hope it, hope it helps a few hikers who struggle with those cramps. Have a lovely day and we'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye.